I'm going to wait for people to join in. Uh, I can see attendees are joining in right now. We'll probably wait for a couple of minutes before I get started. We should have more people coming in in another minute or so. Sure. So, uh, hello, friends. Uh, welcome to Be Waste Wise. I'm Shweta Dhanapani. I'm the community builder in Be Waste Wise. You would have seen me in a few webinars if you've tuned into our webinars in the past. Uh, today's webinar is on marine litter, challenges, solutions, uh, challenges and solutions from a global and Brazilian perspective. We have Vishwas Vidyaranya, who's a co-founder at Ambire Environmental Solution, who's a moderator of the webinar. He's going to talk to Aditi Ramola, Technical Director at uh, International Solid Waste Association, otherwise popularly known as ISWA, and uh, Fernanda Romero, who's an envi environmental scientist. Uh, usually, Vishwas's webinars are bilingual, uh, both in English and in Spanish. And currently, both our speakers will speak in English. However, Vishwas can summarize it in Spanish. So I request our attendees to drop us a message on chat if you want it to be translated. And Vishwas, I think you could maybe repeat the same thing in Spanish so people understand uh, what I exactly say. And uh, as usual, we'll have questions from the audience. Please use the Q&A section for your questions. Uh, Vishwas will pick the right questions and post them to the panelists. Over to you, Vishwas. I am uh, done for now. Thanks, Shweta. Good morning, everyone, uh, or good evening, wherever you are. Uh, thanks for joining in for this important webinar today on Marine Litter. Uh, buenos dias o buenas tardes a todos. Muchas gracias por uh, asistir este webinar. Uh, este es un, normalmente nosotros tenemos un webinar bilingüe, donde tenemos en inglés y español, pero en este webinar principalmente Los ponentes van a hablar en inglés, entonces si algunos de ustedes quieren que traducimos en español, por favor, pueden escribir en el chat, si no, uh, podemos seguir con el webinar en inglés. Um, so, thanks again for joining, uh, for joining. As Shweta mentioned, if anybody wants a sp translation in Spanish, please put write in the chat and we'll be happy to uh, translate the webinar. So basically, today's topic is about marine litter. You know, as you all know, it's become such a big concern globally, and uh, the problem is just increasing. We have a, an estimate of about 200 million tons of plastics and other other garbage, basically, in in the oceans, in the marine lit, in the marine environment, and the ex the estimates suggest that this will go up to about 40 million tons per year by 2040. You know, if we keep continuing with business as usual. So it's a very big challenge globally. Um, and also it has some important aspects of circular economy and product design into it because of a lot of new materials that are being uh, produced in the in the industries. For example, there are a lot of issues with microplastics leaching into the water environment and then ultimately reaching the oceans. So it's not just the solid waste that we're talking about, but the whole aspect of different polymers or different materials that are entering the marine ecosystems. So basically today we'll speak with two experts in this topic, uh, with Aditi Ramola from ISWA and Fernanda Romero from Abrelpe. So I'll just introduce them in a while. So I'll just translate this to Spanish, if you don't mind, Fernanda and Aditi. Uh, entonces, la, la, el, la idea de hoy es discutir sobre basura marina. Basura marina, como ustedes saben, ha sido un problema muy grande y está aumentando el problema a nivel mundial. Uh, la estimación es que tenemos casi 200 millones de toneladas de basura en, el, en recursos hídricos o ecosistemas marinos y esto va a ir aumentando. Por ejemplo, cada año se estima que aproximadamente 40 millones de toneladas de residuos está entrando al ecosistema marino. Y es un problema muy grande. Entonces el tema no solo es de residuos, pero también de economía circular, donde los productos están, des están diseñando o están fabricando uh, sin tener en cuenta el, el tema de microplásticos que pueden entrar en, en recursos hídricos o, última, o, o finalmente en, en estos ecosistemas marinas. Entonces la, hoy tenemos dos expertos muy importantes Aditira Mola de ISWA y Fernanda Romero de Abrelpe. 
uh, que van a explicar sobre lo que está pasando a nivel global, pero también en Brasil, lo, específicamente lo que, está, lo que están haciendo sobre uh, basura marina. Muchas gracias. Uh, so, uh, our first speaker is Aditi. So, I'll briefly introduce Aditi. Uh, Aditi is the technical director at ISPA, the International Solid Waste Association. She manages projects uh, in ISPA and also the partnerships with UN. She, Aditi works with uh, almost all of ISPA's working groups uh, and she's the technical head. She's also the co-founder of Ambar Global and works in circular economy and sustainable finance. Uh, her skills are particularly focused on solid waste management and environmental issues. Aditi has a double master's. Uh, she's a, she has a uh, master's in environmental technology and international affairs from Vienna University of Technology. Uh, she's also uh, been the founder of uh, ISWA YPG, which is the Young Professional Group. And uh, over to you, Aditi, for the video. Thank you so much, uh, Vish and Shweta, for having me. Um, hello, everyone. As Vish has introduced, kindly introduce me. Uh, my name is Aditi, and I work currently at the International Solid Waste Association as well as Umbar Global, where I work with Vish and a very, very amazing team. I'm currently based in India, and uh, it's really fantastic to be talking to all of you all across the globe. And just briefly, before I begin about the topic, I'd like to just uh, throw some light on the activities that uh, we are working on at International Solid Waste Association, or as Shweta said, popularly known as ISWA. So ISWA is a global and independent nonprofit association, and it's a very unique global network, actually. Uh, it comprises of individuals and organizations from all across the globe that are working in the field or are interested in waste management or resource management. And our vision and mission is to promote and develop sustainable solid waste management practices globally, uh, while also promoting a transition to a circular economy. And uh, to achieve this vision and mission, how do we do our things? We actually um, help with knowledge sharing. We do capacity development. Uh, we share best practices with decision makers uh, and also those who influence policy on local, regional, and national levels. And so we're doing this through a lot of projects and initiatives. Just to give you a few examples, um, we have an initiative that brings together uh, municipalities and mayors where we recognize that successful cities or clean cities cannot exist without smart and well-funded waste management. Uh, we also have a task force on closing dump sites uh, where we are working to raise awareness on the concepts and best practices of sustainable waste management, essentially uh, landfill management, uh, engineered landfills, and so on, as well as uh, sustainable production and consumption. So all this uh, I spoke about is at the policy level. And then on the ground level, we also have several projects working to reduce marine plastics pollution, and stopping open burning and open dumping uh, of waste by assisting municipalities uh, to move towards integrated sustainable waste management. So this is a little bit about uh, what we do at ISWA. And uh, just for the, for the people who are joining us, if you would like to know more, you can go on our website. Uh, if you're already members, you are probably taking part in the working groups. And if you're not, uh, make sure to join. It's, it's a very welcoming uh, group. And if any of you are below the age of 35, you can also join a very vibrant young professionals group. So that's about, about ISWA. And the topic for today is marine pollution or marine plastic pollution. And um, the concern regarding this uh, plastic pollution, particularly uh, the damage to ocean species that are being caused by marine plastics has been growing over the years. So you must be hearing a lot about this in the media. You probably have uh, projects ongoing uh, in your cities. If you're, if you're attending this webinar, you're obviously interested in the topic, so you've heard about it. And what we've noticed through the work that we've been doing and the research is that this topic you know, emerged as a driver, as a key driver in around, uh, at the end of 2017. Um, as it entered mainstream media, it entered print media, um, through documentaries that were being made or through publications that came out at that time. And uh, since then, it's been driving a great deal of investment and uh, upgrading of waste management systems in coastal communities and other countries, low and middle income countries across the world. So essentially, what is marine litter, right? Uh, one, one, when, when we hear the term marine or uh, marine plastics or marine litter, uh, we, you know, immediately assume okay it's it's um, 
it's litter or pollution that's been created in the marine environment. But you know, if you actually just go behind the behind the words, you if you start thinking about it, where is all that pollution coming from? Well, it's from unmanaged uh, waste on 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 land, essentially uh, cities and municipalities that are uh, in coastal areas. And where are the leakages coming from? Well, uh, unmanaged waste systems or inadequate waste systems, municipal waste systems uh, across the globe in, in low and middle income countries or where systems are lacking. Uh, so as I said, marine litter and plastic pollution have become top priorities on a global scale uh, because there is a, there is a massive uh, database of evidence regarding their leakage into the, um, into the oceans and also the impact that they have on marine ecosystems, as well as uh, you know, you can very clearly see this. Um, if you've seen uh, photographs of littered beaches, you've seen photographs of turtles being stuck in plastic or birds that have come to shore and now have plastics within, um, you know, in their stomach and so on. So it's become a very visible issue at a global level as well. Um, but, you know, one has to see that, of course, plastic does play a central role in human societies. Uh, but marine litter and plastic pollution have triggered like a global wave um, of new policy and regulation across the globe, uh, including, for instance, um, banning of single-use items and redesigning uh, items for recyclability and so on. And um, so we we say that you know the recognition of this threat is in part attributable to the fact that uh, plastics or in the ocean can travel. Long distances, they, they, as you know, the, the life, uh, lifespan of plastics can be um, uh, up to 100 years or more. And uh, so they, they remain in the environment if, if they're not managed correctly. So they, they travel substantial distances, drifting across borders and then spreading uh, from coast to coast uh, into areas beyond the jurisdiction of, say, individual uh, municipalities or even nation states. So. Uh, so the transboundary nature of this problem um, necessitates an international and a regional cooperation, an international response, and uh, several states and regions are already adopting these kind of international regulations that is aimed at reducing marine litter. And um, Fernanda will also go into it. I mean, currently there's um, a treaty is being uh, negotiated at the global level, the Plastics Treaty, which is you know uh, directly trying to also combat marine litter. So uh, this is just an introduction to uh, the problem and uh, just to give you the global perspective and where we are today, but I would like um, to pass on the floor to, uh, to Fernanda to give more of a perspective uh, from Brazil and also in Latin America. Thank you. And we look forward thanks. to good discussions and questions yeah. After, yeah, after our presentations. No, definitely. Thanks, Aditi. Thanks for the good introduction into the topic. Uh, I think, uh, like you mentioned, there's so many things to do in terms, in terms of policy and, and the interventions start from the land where, this, where the waste is being generated. Uh, of course, we have a lot of questions for you. Also, for the audience, if you have any questions, please put it in the chat. After we finish Fernanda's presentation, we will go into the discussion with both Fernanda and Aditi and we can, do it. Uh, we, we can take your questions. Uh, so our next speaker... For today is Fernanda. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, let me just introduce Fernanda briefly. So Fernanda is an environmental scientist and has a master's degree in integrated environmental analysis. She's currently coordinating the technical de department of the Brazilian Association of Public Cleansing and Waste Management Companies, or Abrelpe. Uh, she has uh, several years of experience in the waste management sector and has worked in projects related to uh, mitigation of emissions, strategic planning for waste management, and more importantly, marine litter prevention. Currently, she coordinates the Waste Free Water Project, which technically supports Brazilian municipalities in the prevention of marine litter from waste management. So Fernanda has a lot of uh, on-the-ground experience, uh, first-hand experience in projects on marine litter. And uh, Fernanda, over to you, you can tell us about the challenges, what you're doing there, and what do you think we should be doing to resolve this problem? Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Please let me know when you can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Now in full screen, right? Okay. Yeah. So yes. um, thank you so much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to be here with you, uh, sharing the, the results we have already achieved and uh, some perspectives from Brazilian point of view. 
And I, as Vish said, I have been coordinating the Waste Free Water Project. And uh, since 2018, we have been implementing uh, different uh, technical assistance in uh, Brazilian municipalities. So from the waste management system point of view, we have been helping them on finding solutions to this complex issue, but also taking our uh, experience uh, out of the country. So we have also been working with uh, Colombia, Dominican Republic, and Costa Rica in the PROMAR project and taking our uh, sample collection methodology uh, to the other countries of the region. So um, thank you, Aditi, for the introduction. I have uh, a little bit more of context in terms of global uh, perspective, just some additional data. And here, as you can see, uh, we have this problem as a, a, an international uh, concern. So it's not only something that we can see in Latin America, even if the problem here is huge, we have this being faced around the, the world. And of course, when we think about marine litter, we uh, at first think about the plastic problem. And uh, uh, this is the most uh, uh, common item found in our collection in Brazil and all over the world. And based on the international estimations, we have uh, 83 million tons of plastic waste already accumulated in the ocean. And uh, it is expected to have 8 million tons of additional mismanaged plastic entering this environment uh, annually. And uh, when we look at the sources, so what are the, the, the origins of, this, of those materials? Uh, it's not a consensus. We have different uh, reports saying different uh, uh, numbers, but we know for sure that the land-based sources are playing an important role on that. And here is important to mention the role that waste management system is playing. Uh, of course, we have uh, problems all over the chain of production and consumption, but it's ending in the waste management system. And this is a, a huge problem that we, we must face with different solutions. So uh, according to an estimation, 80%, an ISVA estimation actually, 80% of marine litter uh, is coming from land-based sources. So we have poor, waste management systems and this is a reality in Latin America region so uh, the the collection coverage is really really low and uh, it's also a, a reason for the waste to to find its way to to water bodies and uh, uh, well this is a complex uh, problem and for sure we can't have a, a simple solution. If we are talking about a complex problem, we, can, we must have a complex solution. And when I say complex solution, I'm talking about integrated solution. It's not only one thing. So we are talking about uh, uh, banning um, instruments around the world, but this is not only one solution. If we are talking about waste management system, we are talking about improvements requirements. So uh, I have here some guiding questions that we have been working with our municipalities to help them on that. And of course, we don't uh, finish the problem with these uh, uh, questions and answers, but at least uh, help us to start uh, define the scenario. So when we are talking about marine litter, we must understand what is this problem? What are the impacts that we can see in different aspects? So social, environmental, political, economical impacts that we have already been facing. Uh, Brazil is a touristic country, as you know, and we face a lot of problems related to marine litter issue, for sure. So we are also talking about uh, uh, an economical problem. And uh, also, we must understand what is this uh, material that we are finding around the world? 
So the, the composition of the marine litter, the sizes of marine litter. So we are talking about this huge problem of uh, micro and macro plastics that we, uh, we find in, in animals. So uh, what is this material that we are finding? Of course, where is it coming from? Uh, we have different activities uh, within the cities, within the countries that are generating uh, products and then waste that is coming to different places. So where is it coming from and where does it go? So what are the destinations to these uh, items, to these products, to this waste? And uh, this waste, when it's released in the environment, it suffers uh, modifications. So physical, chemical, and biological aspects must be considered as well. And then based on this um, scenario, we must identify the, the responsibilities. So all over the chain, since the extraction of raw materials up to the generation of waste, we have different uh, um, actors involved and we must identify the responsibilities of them. We are not only talking about uh, something that is uh, a guilty of the population, definitely it's not like that. Uh, we have problems in the production, releasing materials to the environment, and we, we, we need to deal with that. So just some guiding questions that I will use to guide the presentation and try to bring some aspects for our uh, reflection today to our conversation. So uh, these market questions uh, I'm going to, to discuss a little bit more. So just to, to help you to find yourself on the map, we are talking about Brazil. It's a huge country in uh, uh, South America uh, with a huge population. So 214 million inhabitants in a huge uh, coastal area. So 8,500 uh, kilometers of coastline. And uh, within this area, we have uh, 274 municipalities, and those municipalities are home to 26% of the country population. Uh, since we are talking about Madiliter, and as I said, plastic is uh, uh, one of our biggest challenge. Uh, Brazil is the largest plastic producer in the region. So we produce a lot of single-use plastic or a long life use uh, plastic as well. So it's uh, an important country that is playing an important role on this problem. And uh, according to the estimations, the inhabitants that are living less than 50 kilometers from the coast are uh, producing between 70 and 190,000 tons of solid waste that, is, that are going to the ocean annually. So just some uh, uh, key informations from the country in the region. And now going to uh, what we are uh, discussing today, that is the, the problem of marine litter in Brazil. So where does it come from? Uh, starting with those questions that I just uh, showed you. So we have mainly three uh, origins to the, 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 to the marine litter. So we have the waste that is discarded on the streets that uh, uh, goes to the drainage system. And then uh, we have this reality in many cities in Brazil can be thrown into the sea through outfalls directly. So many coastal cities are uh, still facing this situation. We have industrial products that can be improperly disposed of or lost during transport. So we can uh, think about that a small pieces of plastic that are using in the transportation of materials. We find a lot of these items when we go to the beach. So this is also part of the industrial uh, chain. And of course, wind and rain that can carry waste from dump sites to water bodies. Uh, we don't have a lot of municipalities in Brazil with dump sites in the, in the coast, but definitely one problem that we have is the, the mangrove area. 
receiving a lot of waste. So this is something really common in the, in the, the municipalities in Brazil. Uh, and I must say that Latin America is still facing uh, a dump site scenario. Brazil has more than 2000 dump sites active in the country. So this is also a source of uh, waste that is going to the wrong place, uh, coming from the wrong place and going to the wrong place. And uh, when this waste, uh, these materials uh, end in the, the water body, it can reach the ocean. So starting in rivers and then can reach the ocean, mainly plastic. And as you know, it can float on the surface or sink. And as Aditi was saying, uh, it uh, uh, take us to the problem of microplastic, because when you find the plastic in these environments due to the, to the conditions there, we have the fragmentation into smaller pieces. So when we have microplastics, we are not only talking about materials that are small from the beginning but also uh, materials that turn into small pieces. Um, and uh, what is the composition of those materials? So uh, within Waste Free Water Project, we have been conducting different uh, uh, sample analysis at the beaches, at the mangrove areas, and uh, as around the, 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 the world, we have also um, collected mainly plastic. But after plastic, we also have cigarette butts as a second uh, material that is uh, found in this uh, ecosystem. And uh, there is an important discussion, uh, an international discussion on the composition of cigarette butts. We are also talking about plastic. So, but here we are talking about only one use of material. So cigarette butts play, uh, play an important role in this uh, problem as well. And also the food related items. So uh, we have been finding a lot of food packaging at the beach and at the mangroves as well. And according to some researches, uh, food related items, especially food packaging, are the most common type of plastic ingested uh, by sea turtles in Brazilian coast. And so the majority of litter that we, we find uh, on Brazilian beaches can be linked to ineffective waste disposal and management programs in many municipalities. I live in Sao Paulo, so Sao Paulo has a different uh, condition, but as you know, Brazil is huge. We have more than 5,000 municipalities and with different conditions on waste management systems. So we don't have a lot of Sao Paulo's around the country. Uh, so poor waste management systems are observed around the country. Um, so we had a, um, a research on countries that uh, have the highest volumes of mismanagement plastic. And uh, uh, Brazil was in the 16th place. And according to an estimation from this report that you can see, a, a plastic free ocean report, you can also find it in English. Uh, Brazil contributes with uh, uh, 325,000 tons of plastic waste to marine pollution by plastics annually. So remembering I said uh, Brazil is uh, the largest producer of plastic in the region, so we also contribute a lot with this uh, scenario. Um, and uh, the, the destination of those materials. So we have this, uh, this report from UN mapping of global plastic value chain and plastics losses to the environment. I'm giving this highlight to plastic because as you saw, this is the most fine found uh, item. So we are uh, analyzing it in depth. And uh, I want to give you, uh, I want your attention to this part of the graphic here, uh, the mismanaged waste treatment uh, contribution to marine litter problem. So we have this high volume of waste 
that is ending up in soil, fresh water, and then marine uh, environment with this um, high amount. So 7.36 million tons of mismanaged waste that is going to these areas. So uh, you can also see the origins of microplastics. So microfibers and textile washing, we have a lot of plastic uh, coming from this process, uh, washing of clothes, and uh, it also contributing to the, the scenario of uh, microplastic in marine litter. Um, and uh, again, continuing this destination, and this is something that uh, we al always see uh, in the news, the impact on, the, on animals. So we have this research also in this uh, report to Plastic Free Ocean, showing the impact of plastic in our animals. So here you see the results of uh, a research that was conducted between 2015 and 2019, showing the numbers these high numbers of uh, animals that are suffering with the ingestion of plastic. So from the animals analyzed, 50% of them uh, ingested plastic. So this is not uh, new for us. We see uh, turtles with plastic bags around the, the, the body. So, but this is only one of the impacts. We also have human impacts as Research, re recent research has shown. So plastic in our blood, we are ingesting plastic from many items. So this is also uh, impacting our lives in many aspects. Uh, so now going to, to these solutions, as I, I told you at the beginning of the presentation, we we don't have a, and we we must not have only one solution. It's a complex problem that requires different solutions. And here I I want to show you some of the solutions that are presented to Brazilian context, but also to the region context. And uh, I I must start saying that one of the, the the key elements that we should improve in the region is data. So if we don't improve our data system, it's impossible to think about solution. And in Brazil, uh, we, don't, we still have problems with uh, waste management uh, system data. So we have this uh, one federal uh, database, but it still faces problem on obtaining this data because we lack knowledge, we lack uh, instruments to collect those data. And uh, I always say that we cannot think about the future if we don't know where we are right now. So if we don't have numbers, if we're, we don't have numbers to think about sources of uh, uh, marine litter. So I think this is step number zero for us to, to start uh, changing this situation. But of course, we have our uh, other uh, paths to, to follow right now. And... Uh, the, the first step is to reduce, definitely. Uh, according to the estimations, uh, 500 billion disposable plastic items are produced annually in Brazil. So it's a huge uh, number. It means we have uh, 15,000 uh, items per second. And we use a lot of uh, single-use plastic. So definitely, we should change this consumption. Uh, so this is, um, in my perspective, and based on the results we have already uh, achieved, this is the step number one. Uh, then we go to recycling. Uh, I see, based on our results, I see recycling as a solution, but we need to consider the limits of recycling, definitely. Uh, we are not talking about, when it comes to plastic, we are not talking about uh, uh, a material that is easy to be recycled as glass, for example, that has uh, infinite cycles to be recycled. Even if you go to Europe, in Sweden, for example, they have been working with a, a, a recycling procedure of plastic that reaches 
maximum five or six cycles. So we have limits to recycling. And uh, according to UN, only 10% of uh, all plastic ever produced has been recycled. Uh, while 14 has been incinerated and in the worst, worst scenario has been uh, finding its way to disposal areas and to dump sites, if we are talking about many countries in the region. So um, recycling is important, but we should take some steps back and uh, change the, the beginning of the chain. So uh, many plastics in Brazil, for example, cannot even be recycled. If we are thinking about PET, it's possible to recycle. But if we are talking about multi-layer plastic, we don't have procedure to recycle those materials. So recycling is important, but we have limits to that. And those limits must be considered. And uh, we are uh, referring to a problem uh, that is the, the waste that does not respect boundaries. So even if I have the most ambitious target in Brazil, if I don't have an international action, the situation won't change. So we have already collected, as you all know for sure, uh, we have already collected the waste coming from, the, from Asia, for example. So it does not respect this, this boundary. So we need action uh, in this global perspective. And that's why, um, as Aditi was saying at the beginning, we had this important movement last year of this uh, the plastic treaty that is under negotiation right now. We will have the second meeting uh, in May, if I'm not wrong, to discuss the next steps of uh, uh, this treaty. And this is an important instrument because we are talking about an international legally binding. So uh, we are moving forward from uh, voluntary measures to something bigger. And this is really important. Uh, Europe can have the best targets. If we from Latin America, for example, are not involved, they won't achieve it. So that's why this international uh, perspective perspective instrument is so important. Uh, and I can see here. And for sure, we, we must uh, look at the uh, waste management hierarchy and the first steps are reduce, reuse and return. So uh, we, we have those phases concerning materials that are not even waste and we don't want them to be uh, transformed into waste. We want to prevent it. So reducing, reusing, and returning is, is really important. And we already have initiatives on that. So also according to this study, if we have a 10% increase in the market share of returnable soft drink bottles, we can uh, reduce marine pollution caused by these products by 22%. So again, we must go to the beginning of the chain and change a lot of things there. It's not only uh, looking at the consumption in the population level, but in the whole system. So it means between 4.5 and 7.6 billion PET bottles out of the oceans each year. So it's a change in our economical view of production, definitely. Uh, the environmental impacts, the social impacts must be considered as well. Um, so that's it from my side, some uh, ideas for us to think about. Here are my, my contact, uh, the, the email, and also our website where you can find uh, important reports, as Aditi was saying. So we have been developing reports from, with data from many uh, regions in Brazil. Uh, Santos was our first uh, municipality in the south uh, uh, coastal area of Sao Paulo state. So you can find everything there in Portuguese and in English. And also our data from Abrelpi in, the, in our website. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, Fernanda. 
that was uh, really insightful, a uh, lot of data and congratulations on the great work, but I, I know the problem is very big and you know there's a lot of work required. So for our, before we get into questions, we have a lot of questions for you, but I just want to summarize a bit of uh, both of your thoughts. I mean, it's difficult, but let me give it a shot. Uh, so basically, uh, si para resumir un poco en español uh, los dos charlas que acabo de escuchar, Aditi explicó sobre uh, el, lo que está pasando a nivel global, el tema de políticas, que es recursos marinas. Por ejemplo, estamos siempre, estamos hablando de uh, uh, basura en ecosistema marina, sin embargo, es importante entender de dónde viene esto o cómo vamos a resolver los problemas. Por ejemplo, la origen, la, el origen de muchos de estos residuos viene desde las ciudades costeras o ciudades, entonces, que está uh, botando residuos o no está manejando bien. Entonces, esto entra a recursos hídricos y al final llega a a los océanos. Entonces, es importante ver este problema de manera integral, desde fuente de este, generación de residuos hasta al final. Entonces, este es uno. El segundo punto es el tema de circularidad, no solo es el tema de manejo de residuos, pero también el tema de cómo vamos a fabricar los productos para que están diseñados bien para reciclabilidad y tienen un también que tenemos que tener unos programas importantes en el tema de reducción. Fernanda uh, explicó uh, el, uh, el caso de Brasil, principalmente lo que están trabajando, eh, y uh, son mismos temas que reitero. Entonces, uno es el manejo integral de residuos, pero tenemos que empezar desde reducción, porque el tema de reciclaje no es infinito. Por ejemplo, los ciclas de los ciclos de cuánto veces podemos reciclar el mismo polímero o el mismo producto es limitado, no es que siempre podemos ir reciclando el mismo producto, entonces es importante empezar desde la reducción y también hay otros temas de importancia de políticas, por ejemplo, hoy todo se estamos haciendo en temas voluntarios, pero existe diferentes políticas internacionales, uno de estos lo que mencionó Fernanda y también Andy, es el Pacto Global de Plásticos que está en negociación en este momento. Entonces, esto va a ser algo obligatorio para los países, no solamente el tema voluntario. Fernanda me explicó los datos de cuánto generan los residuos en, en Brasil y, los, y también las caracterizaciones que hicieron en, en playas y en diferentes ciudades costeras. Lo, el principal componente es el plástico, como es, como es en todo el mundo. Y después también está el tema de colillas, colillas de cigarrillos y también envases y empaques de, de comida o alimentos principalmente. Brasil está generando casi 325 mil toneladas de residuos anualmente al ecosistema marino. Uh, entonces, para, para resolver todo este problema, tenemos que empezar desde datos. Si no sabemos dónde estamos, es difícil uh, resolver. Este es el mensaje principal, uno de los mensajes principales de Fernanda. Y también empezar desde reducción, desde el fuente, cómo vamos a reducir o manejar los residuos bien para que estos no entren en sitios incontrolados. En América Latina y Caribe, en muchos países, el tema de rellenos sanitarios o, perdón, botaderos a cielo abierto todavía es, existe, entonces es importante resolver esto. Este es un breve resumen. Si tienen alguna pregunta, pueden poner en el chat. Uh, so, Aditi y Fernanda, Uh, oh, I mean, so we have some questions for you uh, based on what you mentioned. So starting with Aditi, uh, uh, so the problem, as you mentioned, and also as Fernanda mentioned, is so big, uh, and we need interventions in so many areas because uh, you know the, the map that Fernanda was showing it's a, such a complex problem, socio-economic problem. So what do you think are the most important things to be done to resolve this issue and what is being done also globally is do you see any positive change that's happening or are we still on the trajectory uh, that we were thanks for the question uh, vish and uh, for this um, amazing opportunity to discuss you know what we've been doing through projects uh, fernanda gave a very comprehensive presentation of the work that's being done in brazil and uh, they've actually done really uh, excellent data collection. Uh, so she could tell you the problem materials that we found on beaches. She mentioned cigarette butts and so on. 
Um, just going back to what we both said, of course, uh, all three of us have said that marine plastic uh, pollution is a like is a massive problem. And uh, what both me and Fernando emphasized is that it's uh, you know it doesn't respect boundaries. So even if one country has um, very less leakage to the environment or to the marine uh, environment in particular, if uh, the whole globe or all the countries don't work together, it's going to be you know it's going to be a persistent problem. And I just want to go back to what both of us actually said as well is that uh, what is leading to this challenge actually, right? You can't just um, isolate one material. You can't just say it's a plastics problem, right? It's um, there's something, uh, basically material is leaking into the environment that shouldn't be there. And if you go back and see why is it happening, you, you, you're looking at where is it coming from and where is it ending up? You're essentially seeing that um, this is being really spurred on by ineffective collection and transportation of waste on land, essentially lacking infrastructure, poor waste management practices, and ineffective or in non-existent waste management systems, essentially. And so I think one of the first interventions that we've all talked about would be to improve waste collection and or access to waste collection. So. Uh, if you've been following the UN news recently, um, a clean, uh, you know, the, the right to a clean environment is now a universal human right. And uh, Fernando also mentioned that uh, there are several aspects of uh, this that are detrimental to human health and the environment. And, and of course, there are social aspects to it, the economic as aspects to it. So if you actually look at the problem, um, there's, uh, you know, it affects tourism, which, uh, you know, directly affects jobs and so on. Um, as, um, it affects uh, fishing, uh, fishing uh, population. So, so uh, population that are relying on fish are seeing their uh, their income go down as well. And one of the projects I forgot to mention is uh, that we're doing on the ground is the Clean Oceans Through Clean Communities project, uh, which we're implementing in India and Indonesia, both uh, very populous nations. Um, and we notice in both places that when we talk to fishing communities, they they really feeling the challenge. So um, when Vish, you talk about yeah, it being a massive and a global issue, it is. Um, does it, and uh, as Fernanda mentioned as well, it's a complex issue. So it's obviously not going to have uh, very simple solutions, but uh, if we were to say a few, you know, one or two things that people can start doing or looking at, of course, so improving collection or improving waste management systems, that's kind of like a low hanging fruit for us. Um, then if you want to have better plans in place, um, it was mentioned before that we need to have good data, which is severely lacking, where we are finding in other projects that we're working together on, that uh, data on waste management is either severely lacking or is either outdated or is just not accurate. And so if you want to uh, really tackle this at source, um, you need to you need to manage it well. So if you, if you don't have, so, you know, there's a nice saying that uh, you cannot manage that you don't measure. So something that you don't measure, you can't manage well. And so, of course, data collection is extremely important too, uh, just so that we can have sustainable uh, systems in place. And um, several organizations globally have been developing good tools. And I would just like to give you an example of one um, UN Habitats Waste Wise Cities tool, which is you know uh, measuring in granularity the kind of waste that's flowing through systems. Uh, through uh, city boundaries, through municipalities, you can apply it at a bigger scale too. And um, ISWA is also leading uh, some of that work uh, with UN Habitat, but we're also in discussions with uh, with other UN bodies like UNEP, and which is the United Nations Environment Program, uh, to have a repository to actually create something like a uh, you know a global database where people can report data and can also access data, so it's freely available because you know it's needed, it's severely needed. Um, uh, I, of course, want to say things about uh, prevention. Uh, that's, I think, has to be has to be one of our first things. Otherwise, um, we already know the data that Vish gave and Fernanda gave. Uh, each year, around 8 to 13 million tons of plastics are ending up in our oceans. And it's a, as in 8 to 13 million people, really, it's an estimate, right? It's not easy to measure. And um, so, uh, looking at uh, interventions at the prevention level is important too, because otherwise, if we go down the same trajectory, you know, by 2050, um, some reports say like, you know, there's going to be more plastic in the ocean by then. I think it's going to be earlier than that. Uh, but 
so we really need to look at the waste hierarchy, go up to prevention. Of course, I mentioned already collection systems. And then finally, I would like to say um, what's happening at the global level, this international policy, uh, the treaty that's being discuss discussed and negotiated at the moment, um, if there isn't a concerted effort, effort at the global level, it's going to it's not going to be a problem that one country can solve, again, because of the transboundary nature of it. Um, so we really need to work together uh, at the international level, then take that policy down to national, subnational, so on and so forth. So um, when Fernanda mentioned the project uh, in Brazil, you know, it's a local issue. So she's given a very granular, detailed assessment of what's happening uh, on the on the areas that we worked in Brazil. Um, but but each country, each city will have its own issues. Like we need to map the, you know, you need to see the waste flows through the system. And that can only happen through good collection, waste collection, uh, waste data collection, and uh, so on and so forth. But we need to look at each, each, um, each case uh, for what it is because waste management or the the ocean plastic pollution problem is global but the interventions will will have to be local so uh, looking at policy at the international level bringing it down to national subnational state city village level and so on and of course we keep talking about plastics and recycling and so on i mean plastics are thousands of types of material there there it's not plastic is not one homogeneous material some of it is easily recyclable. The, the price points are different. People, you know, see value in. Uh, so pet 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 is recycled widely, um, whereas PVC is hard to recycle. So we need to look at it in a more nuanced way as well. So um, these are just a few things that come to mind uh, that I wanted to mention. Um, uh, I hope this plastic pollution treaty is going to be um, signed by everybody because it's only being negotiated. It only becomes uh, binding when it's ratified and signed by most parties. So we'll see what happens. The, the next meeting is coming up in a couple of months um, and uh, it's not going to be signed uh, for another couple of years, I think. Um, but yeah, that, those are a few things I wanted to mention. And um, I'd like Fernanda also to say a few things on that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, thanks a lot, Aditi. I mean, your holistic solution, holistic uh, view of what needs to be done and what are the challenges. And I would like to connect, uh, you know, the last point that you mentioned and uh, put a question to Fernanda, the global plastic treaty that we are talking about. Uh, so uh, looking at it from a national perspective or even from a Brazilian perspective, you can tell us, how do you think this this treaty would affect Brazil or what national instrument should be put in place to ensure you, know, you actually, all countries abide by this? Uh, well, thank you for the question. I think that uh, as I mentioned it during the presentation, we have been trying to uh, solve the problem through voluntary measures and we know it won't work if we don't have a, a, a something that obliges those that are signing the, the treaty to do something uh, we won't move forward and uh, so I think this was an important step when they decided to have this uh, legally binding instrument so they will have uh, uh, responsibilities to, to, to achieve. And also, um, since waste does not respect boundaries, as we both, uh, the three of us said, uh, I can have the most ambitious targets. If uh, I don't have uh, my neighbor's countries, if I don't have the other continent's countries doing the same, uh, trying to, to work for the same purpose, we won't change. Uh, we saw something interesting in our study in Santos that was uh, we were finding waste at the beach that was coming from the, the other municipality, the, the, the neighbor municipality. So uh, the city was having a lot of services being offered to, to the population, a good waste uh, uh, coverage, uh, uh, separate collection service and many, many service being offered to them. But they still had the problem of uh, uh, many materials being collected. So I think that uh, once we have this instrument of uh, the, the, all the, 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 the countries that are signing being, uh, having these responsibilities, I think we, we can start changing it. But of course, as I think we all uh, know, know from the news after the first meeting, uh, we need more actors involved. 
Uh, we are not only talking about the country level, we are not only talking about the production level, we have other stakeholders that must be involved for us to have something concrete and achievable. So if we don't listen all the, the, the actors that are impacted by this, this problem, we won't move forward, we won't uh, leave the place that we are right now. So I think we, we have many changes to do in the next uh, meetings of negotiation. Uh, we, have, uh, we, we must have uh, uh, the presence of other um, interested parts. And uh, I think this was one of the, the most uh, uh, um, criticized aspect of the first meeting. So I hope we will have uh, more um, advances in the, the next uh, discussions. Thanks, thanks a lot, Fernanda. That's that's really important. I mean, what both of you said about how voluntary mechanisms are not sufficient, uh, and it's true with I think with most of environmental issues, whether it's waste or even greenhouse gas emissions, we've seen the voluntary reduction mechanisms have not really helped us comply with the Paris Agreement goals or anything. I mean, so it's it's important. We really hope this uh, the negotiations this year actually have come out with something more strict and binding so that we resolve this issue soon. Um, uh, so I, we are almost at the end of the hour. I don't know if there's anything else that either of you have want to conclude with um, or or if not, I think we can close the webinar. Yeah, well, I can go ahead. And go ahead. No, Fernanda, you first. <laughs> no, I just, I just, talking a lot please go ahead <laughs> and uh, no i just wanted to go back to what uh, fernanda also showed uh, an abysmal figure about the fact that uh, only nine to ten percent of the plastics that are being produced worldwide are getting recycled and that should really make us pause and think a little bit um, and she mentioned as well that we need to go back uh, to production cycles we need to go back to design um, talk about design for recycling and you know we talk a lot now about circular economy and what does that really mean that we're trying to close loops trying to keep materials in the system for much longer and um, she also cited some research that's been done in EU uh, countries where uh, even the maximum number of cycles that they can get out of some of the materials or plastic plastic materials is five or six times, you know, whereas if you look at a material like uh, glass, um, it is virtually, you can you can go on recycling for a long time. Of course, uh, costs and benefits and all that have to be taken into account. But uh, one needs to pause and see uh, our plastic uh, production is only going up. Um, nothing against the material itself. It's, you know, it's revolu revolutionized um, modern life and uh, we cannot live without the material. But one has to think, uh, you know, about single use and so on uh, and that's being tackled I think many many countries have uh, laws and now um, new regulation that have come out against them uh, against them a and so uh, one can also ask questions about what can we do as individuals of course uh, limited things of course because uh, I think uh, the policy has to be at the global national um, local levels but even as individuals we can of course make a small difference and uh, it, it it it's always beneficial for the environment to have um, very what would I say, um, enlightened enlightened citizens. So uh, one should take time to read these things and to, to be informed. Uh, but I think we do have good solutions coming up as well. I think many, many um, entrepreneurs, if you go back, uh, I think some a company has won uh, one of the prizes from the royal family in the UK. One of the, one of the technologies that has won is on uh, ocean plastic cleanup. Um, I think there's, some sort of barrier uh, technology, uh, but you can see a lot of innovation happening in this field as well. So that's that's a really positive thing. And I want to leave that uh, with a positive message. And I give Fernanda and Vish the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aditi. Uh, so I think my, my last words are that uh, it's really important for us to have a transition, but we must have a just transition. Uh, definitely the problem on marine litter is being caused by multiple factors, but it's being suffered from uh, a specific uh, uh, countries more than others. I don't know if you have seen the news from Brazil, 
we have been suffering a lot with uh, uh, storms. So a lot of deaths actually, and the waste management has a, a huge connection with that. So uh, many, many people here are suffering from that. And we see a lot of waste when everything uh, starts. So uh, we should move forward. We should involve more actors in our discussions, uh, giving the floor only to the, to the country level won't help us the way we should have. So I think this is the, the key message. Uh, the world needs a trans transition, but it must be a trans just transition. Thanks, thanks, Fernanda. That's a very powerful statement to end with and very true for, for all environmental issues. Thanks, Aditi, as well, for, uh, for showing us the whole picture of the problems and solutions. Uh, so, I mean, it was a very impactful, very, very good webinar. I, I think, you know, quite a lot of issues that we discussed. Uh, so thanks to both of you and also to Shweta uh, and Be Waste Wise for helping us, uh, for organizing this webinar. And uh, thanks, Shweta. Over to you. Thank you, Vishwas. Thanks a lot to Fernanda and uh, Aditi. Uh, it, it was quite insightful. I mean, you took so much effort to describe, give us a full picture of exactly the issues related to marine litter. So thanks a lot. And for the attendees, if you haven't signed up for our newsletters, please go ahead and sign up. Uh, we have other webinars coming up in uh, March and in April, which uh, will get listed shortly and you'll get an update. And Vishwas will host another webinar on Be Waste Wise later this year. Uh, <laughs> you will be updated about that as well. So do sign up for our uh, newsletter. And uh, this webinar will go up on our website and our YouTube channel in two weeks. Up until then, you will have access to it via Zoom. Uh, have a good day. Good evening. Good night, wherever you Thank are. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night, all. Bye. Bye.